Hey everybody, this is example number four for structural dynamics covering the response to harmonic excitation. The problem statement that we have is the structure shown below has the following properties. It has a mass of 100 kilograms, transla translational stiffness of 50,000 newtons per meter, damping factor equal to 0 0.1, and it's subjected to a harmonic force having an amplitude of 500 newtons and an exciting frequency of 10 radians per second. So based on this, we need to find the steady state, uh, we need to find the amplitude of the steady state displacement, the phase of the steady state displacement with respect to the harmonic exciting force, and the maximum velocity of the response. And also, we need to find the equation of total displacement of the structure as a function of time. If the initial displacement is five centimeters, and the initial velocity is zero centimeters per second for the structure. So here's our figure. We have some type of, uh, we have some type of rigid deck and the mass is equal to one, uh, 100 kilograms. And we have, it has translational, st translational stiffness. So these columns, there are two columns here and here. And these represent springs in parallel. So it's just going to be k over 2. The stiffness of each column is equal to k over 2 because this is springs in parallel. And then we have some type of dampening, dampening effect here. And it's excited by a harmonic force that we, uh, that we write mathematically as f sub o times sine of capital omega times t. f o times sine of capital omega t where omega is the exciting frequency, capital omega is the exciting frequency, and t is time. Before we proceed with the solution, I just want to let you guys know that this example is brought to you by Bentley. And Bentley Systems is a software development company that supports the professional needs of engineers, designers, planners, and contractors responsible for creating and managing infrastructure. Bentley has tailored software applications for design, modeling, and analysis of buildings, structures, bridges, plants, and more. I have used Bentley's software, and I can say that the software was very easy to use, and the support that came with it was impeccable. Whenever I needed help, the Bentley team was there for me. And here's their website. It's Bentley.com. There's a link to Bentley.com and some of their YouTube channels within the description part of this video. So if you're a student and want to get familiar with the software and get a leg up over your colleagues during your job search, academic licensing is available through Bentley. And if you're a practicing engineer and you want to sharpen up your skills, they have a bunch of videos and webinars on their website as well as their various YouTube channels. So please check them out. And now coming back to our dynamics problem, the first thing we're going to do is to is to label the variables so everything is clear. M, the mass is equal to 100 kilograms. The stiffness, K, is equal to 50,000 newtons per meter. F sub O, the amplitude of the harmonic force, is equal to 500 newtons. And the excitation frequency, the frequency of this harmonic force, is equal to 10 radians per second, which we call capital omega. And zeta, the damping factor, is equal to 0 0.1. The next step is to calculate the circular natural frequency, and that's equal to the square root of the stiffness divided by the mass. So our circular natural frequency is equal to 22.36 radians per second. After this, we're going to calculate the frequency ratio, and the frequency ratio is equal to capital omega divided by lowercase omega, so the excitation frequency divided by the frequency of the system and that's equal to 0.447. After this, we're going to calculate the amplitude of the steady state displacement, which is one of the things the problem asks us to do. So the amplitude of steady state displacement, we call it x sub f, xf, is equal to xo times dmf, and dmf here is the dynamic magnification factor. And x sub o, x o, is equal to the equivalent static deflection, and that's equal to the amplitude of the harmonic force, f o, divided by the stiffness. So that's equal to this equivalent static deflection is equal to 500 divided by 50,000, and that's 
0.01 meters or 10 millimeters. So we calculated XO, now we need to calculate the DMF, the dynamic magnification factor, and here's the formula for this. It's equal to 1 over uh, 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus the frequency ratio squared, and this whole value is squared. So 1 minus R squared, and then this whole, uh, in parentheses, so this, it's also squared, plus 2 times zeta times R and squared. And remember, R is the frequency ratio. So we know all the values, so we just plug in the numbers, and we find that the DMF, the dynamic magnification factor, is equal to 1.242. So now we can calculate the amplitude of steady state displacement, and we just multiply XO times DMF, and then we get 12.42 millimeters. Next, we, we're going to calculate the phase angle. And that's one of the things the question asks us to do. And we call the phase angle to psi, and it's the inverse tan, and the formula for this e is equal to the inverse tan of 2 times zeta times r divided by 1 minus r squared. So we plug in the numbers, and we find that uh, to psi, the phase angle is equal to 0.11 radians. Now we're going to calculate the maximum velocity of the steady state response. So here's the displacement of this, uh, here's the displacement, the steady state displacement, and it's equal to XO divided by the square root of 1 minus R squared, and this whole thing is squared, plus 2 times zeta times R squared times sine of capital omega T minus the phase angle to psi. So to get the velocity, we take the first derivative. So it's basically the same equation. Uh, all, the only thing different is we just have an additional capital omega, and now this sine is turned into cosine. Okay, so we know that the maximum velocity will occur when I'll just simplify this. I just simplified the uh, the, the the equation for the max the velocity. I just simplified it a little bit more. It's x o times capital omega times DMF, dynamic magnification factor, times cosine of capital omega T minus the phase angle. So this and this are the same. I just simplified it. So we know that the maximum velocity will occur when the cosine value, when this value is equal to 1. So we set that equal to 1. And so the maximum velocity will be equal to x XO times capital omega times times a dynamic magnification factor and we know all these values XO is equal to 0 0.01 and then 0 0.01 meters and the excitation frequency is equal to 10 radians per second and the DMF the dynamic magnification factor is equal to 1.242 so the maximum velocity of the steady state response is equal to 0.1242 meters per second Lastly, we're going to calculate the total, we're going to derive the total displacement equation. So, because we have this harmonic force applied on this, on this structure, the complete equation, the complete displacement, is described by two, by two sets of terms. One is the homogeneous solution, and this represents a free vibration, and, and, then, and then the other term is a particular solution which describes the force response, the response due to the harmonic force. So this is the transient, transient slash free vibration part, free vibration, and this is the steady state portion, steady state, or slash um, forced response. So I've written the complete uh, equation, displacement equation, and so this portion represents the homogeneous solution, free vibration portion, and this part of the equation represents the steady state response. So it's A times sine times omega D times T plus B times cosine times omega D times T time, t, uh, times the mathematical constant E 
to the power of negative uh, to the power of negative the damping factor times omega times t plus xo divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 times zeta times r squared times sine of capital omega t minus the phase angle. So here a and b, those are the only values that we don't know that we will need to find using the initial displacement and initial velocity. Everything else we know or we can easily calculate. Omega d here, this is the damped circular natural frequency. So this is the damp frequency. T is time. Zeta is the damping factor. Omega is the, the circular natural frequency. T is time. And then X, O, and R, we already know all these things. So we'll go ahead and calculate the damp circular natural frequency. And that's equal to uh, the undamped circular natural frequency of the system, which is the square root of K over M. We already calculated this, K over M times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. 1 minus the damping factor squared. And so our damp circular natural frequency is equal to 22.25 radians per second. So I went ahead and plugged that into the equation. I plugged it in here, and then I plugged it in here. And then I also plugged in everything else we knew, the negative zeta times, uh, times omega times t. And, and then here, the 12.42 represents the x sub xo divided by xo divided by the square root of 1 minus r squared squared plus 2 times zeta r squared. So all I did here was just plug in everything, uh, everything we know or the, everything we know or we can calculate times sine of 10t minus 0.11. So this is a phase angle, uh, and then here is the capital omega and this is I'll just label it one more time damp circular natural frequency this here is the uh, damping factor zeta times circular natural frequency okay so now using the initial conditions we have to solve for a and b and before that I just also wrote I, I, I took the first derivative of this equation I just took the first derivative of this equation because that represents the velocity and I'll just let you let you guys see it but I'm not gonna go through and and just uh, I'm not gonna go and call out every single thing you can just see and see you can just see from here how I got the first derivative and this is the velocity once we've done that now we use the displacement equation and the velocity equation that we have and we plug in the initial displacement and initial velocity to get the to find the values of a and b so so the first thing we're going to do is look at the initial condition that we have of x the initial displacement is equal to 55 centimeters i believe it was let me just go back and check five centimeters yeah it's five centimeters so that's 50 millimeters and then we just plug that in and we so we use that initial displacement and we plug in for time equals t equals zero we plug in t equals zero in the displacement equation and here's what we get a times sine of zero plus b times cosine of zero e to the power of 0 plus 12.42 times sine of 0 minus 0.11. So all I did was plug in t equals 0. I plugged in t equals 0 into this equation, into our displacement equation, into this equation here. Plugged in t equals 0. So we get that 50, uh, 50 uh, millimeters equals B plus 12.42 times sine of negative 0.11, so, which is equal to B minus 1.36, so B equals 51.36. Once we've calculated B, all we have to do now is calculate A. And so to calculate A, we're going to plug in T equals 0 into the velocity equation. So what we're going to do is plug in t equals 0 into 
into this equation here. It's a pretty long equation. The velocity equation, t equals zero. And so a lot of these terms will cancel out, like they'll just go to zero because if sine of zero equals zero. So that's what we're going to see here. So here's what we get. A times sine of zero, that's zero, plus b times cosine of zero, times negative 2.236e to the power of zero, plus 22.25 times a times cosine of zero, minus 22.25b sine of zero, that goes to zero, times e to the power of zero, plus 12.42 times 10 times cosine of negative 0.11. So we just simplify this, and we also, for b, we plug in what we know, b equals 51.36, simplify it, and we find that a equals negative 0.387. So now that we know a and b, we can plug it into the displacement equation. And here is our complete displacement equation. And this part is the, the homogeneous part. And here is a particular solution. And this is the end of this example. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. Uh, visit the website at engineeringexamples.net. And also like the Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash engineering examples. Thanks.